Hello and welcome to WJTS Inform. I'm your host, Bill Potter. We are very honored, as we are every now and then, when the Lieutenant Governor is in town, she stops by and visits with us. And joining us now is Sue Elsperman, Lieutenant Governor for the state of Indiana. Sue, welcome to the show. Good to see you again, Bill. Now, I do, I guess I should preface this a little bit. Sue and I go way back. We're actually classmates. Yes. I just turned a whole lot grayer than she did. <laughs> Should we tell them what year we graduated? <laughs> no, we should not. There's too many out there no, who weren't born yet. That's, we don't, they don't even need to know that it was 1995. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, you know, it's always a pleasure having you here. You're here for many different good things yeah. throughout Dubois County and Southern Indiana, but let's talk about what are good things that you think are happening in Indiana. Yeah. Well, across the state, if there's something we can be so proud about is Indiana is really on a hot streak in job creation. We have announced, we are on a record setting pace of new jobs uh, in Indiana. In fact, the first six months of this year were our most jobs announcements ever. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen our unemployment drop in the last year and a half by two full percentage points. We've added 100,000 jobs total across the state. And we are reaching for what I call the high water mark. Governor and I use the uh, more jobs in Indiana than ever before as our overarching goal of these four years. And we are uh, about 50,000 away from that high water mark. We won't stop there, we promise. Okay. But yeah. it's good to see. And as uh, our Department of Workforce Development has shared, we're expanding our workforce. So not only has unemployment dropped, we're adding the jobs, we're adding people into that labor market, which means more Hoosiers have jobs and see the opportunities. And probably even more people from outside of Indiana are seeing the opportunities here in Indiana. We know the businesses are, and we think now that word's getting out to uh, those Americans around us as well. I know you have always worked hard on the brain drain, which is folks from your mm -hmm. county going mm -hmm. and living somewhere Correct. else. So really now, I guess on your end, it's people in Indiana going and living somewhere mm -hmm. else because mm -hmm. opportunities may be That's better. Right. But now that may be switching and going back. Uh, if Indiana is doing so well, we can get people to come back to our state. We hope that we do have some work to do on that front. We know from being across the state uh, as uh, recently as sitting down with Doug Bobble right here in Jasper with Jasper Engines. The difficulty now, so the other side of the coin from all those great jobs, is that our employers are really struggling to find the employees. We know in Dubois County, because we announced the Jasper Engine jobs and the Ferdinand Master Brand jobs recently, 500 or more jobs here, and yet at the low rate of unemployment in Dubois County, where do we find those workers? So. We're trying to pull them in, but in addition to finding them, they have to have the right skills. And mm -hmm. a lot of these jobs do require certifications, two-year degrees, technician, machine operators, uh, people who have a skill set that goes with them. And that's the place where we have some real work to do as a state. And, and I guess along with that, too, now we need to start thinking about housing. Ah, uh, because, yes. you know, when, when you talk in Ferdinand, there's going to be 300 jobs with a master brand. 300 people to move to Ferdinand. I don't know if there's 300 homes available. So, so now there's a housing uh, thing, correct. which is a good thing a good because that means new construction. New construction, it, it means that our communities can grow. And I know uh, having spent time with mayors and community leaders, they want their communities to grow mm -hmm. so that they can support uh, a good quality of life. Our schools uh, over the last 10 to 20 years, we've seen the shrinkage of our smaller community schools. This brings in new children to uh, make sure that we really have prosperous communities, thriving communities. So it's a good problem to have. Uh, in fact, it's one of the reasons that Huntingburg's uh, application for Stellar was well noted because it included the housing challenge, recognizing the unique of this area and, and that community in particular to being able to grow. Honeybird really needs to, to you know, I mean, I know you've been in town to, to announce the Stellar mm -hmm. uh, Award, but, you know, really, Honeybird is moving. And, and I they tell are. you, they've got a great group of people over there working together, uh, led by Mayor Denny Spinner, to mm -hmm. just get things going. That's correct. And so they're being recognized, have been recognized as Stellar. But, you know, I could say that about most of the communities in Dubois right. County. We tend not to wait. We tend to try to be proactive and uh, move our communities forward. We have lots of great community leaders out there from the mayors and the town councils to the local elected officials at all levels and the great volunteers throughout those communities that are helping make good things happen. So uh, 
I'm very, very pleased for Huntingburg, but I think it just is an example of uh, Du Bois County overall. And really, it is good for Du Bois County. It is good for Du Bois County. Now, change thing a little bit. Uh, I, I know we live in a rural area. We appreciate what agribusiness means mm -hmm. when you live in, in the rural parts of Indiana. Uh, you just recently went on a, a trip to Asia concerning yes. agriculture. Yes, we took uh, over 20 people from Indiana representing agriculture to Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Three uh, countries that could not support their own populations in terms of food. Mm -hmm. So we are very important to them already in terms, mostly commodities, corn and soybeans. But we saw great opportunities over there for pork, for poultry, for dairy, for uh, popcorn of all things. Mm -hmm. Few people sure. understand that Indiana is number one in the country in popcorn. Mm -hmm. So we actually had one of our largest uh, popcorn producers with us. But that's to say that uh, we're, agriculture is incredibly important to us as the revenue and the economy that it provides. It's over $16 billion in our economy and a half a million Hoosiers are employed in agriculture or agribusiness. Very, very important. But worldwide, it's the food. It's, mm -hmm. it's food security for a, a growing world and in Indiana, we're a leader and it's, it makes you very proud when you travel with uh, our great agricultural leaders and knowing uh, our productivity here in Indiana, our attention to food safety and the reliability of how we operate, it's pretty tremendous. So that, and that's a great export, uh, which great export. really is, is very good for Indiana. Yes. And, and it's good for Southern Indiana because of the river, yes. uh, which is probably the best way to get those grains from Indiana uh, down and, and across the From uh, Southern the Indiana, ocean. correct, and from Northern Indiana uh, in Burns Harbor and Lake Michigan. So mm -hmm. we have, we are very blessed uh, to have the, the river and the lake on either end of the state. We're also blessed that Indiana as we're doing water studies. You know, if you study southwest Indiana and out west all the uh, drought mm -hmm. that they're experiencing, well, Indiana, what we just completed a comprehensive study of our state. The good news is we have plentiful water. The bad news is it's not always in the right places <laughs> in the state, so we have to figure out how to, um, to, to move it in the best ways or store it in the best ways. But uh, that's a blessing which allows our agriculture industries to operate, but it also allows the other big industries like steel production and aluminum and some of the chemical processing that uses lots and food processing that uses lots of water. So Indiana's doing well and uh, I hope it th that all continues. How are things with the Blue Ribbon? Well the uh, Blue Ribbon panel, uh, that's our transportation uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. panel. Uh, we completed the work in early July, presented it to the governor. Uh, the team, which was really a, a mix of industry people, logistics leaders, along with some of our mayors and the ports and uh, all perspectives around uh, transportation infrastructure. We provided three tiers of projects, those that were most critical, those that were, that were important to the growth of the state, and then if we had you know, money left over <laughs> someday, which is difficult around transportation for sure, um, that uh, these would be the projects. So for Southern Indiana, important to know in Tier 1 was the I-69 bridge into Henderson. I, I think I share the comment that many in Southern Indiana say we don't want I-69 to be a cul-de-sac that stops at the river <laughs> right. that needs to go across. So that was a Tier 1. Tier 2 was uh, the Mid-States corridor that we called I-67. Mm -hmm. uh, that second route, uh, north-south uh, to parallel I-65, I but coming up and meeting with I-69 from Nashville up to uh, up north. So we have, uh, I think we did a really good job as a team to use solid criteria to look at which of these projects were most important to the state, uh, economically and quality of life, but then giving guidance to NDOT and the governor is we will have very um, measured resources to take forward. And unless we can find another major moves, uh, it's going to be hard to have the kind of dollars we had under the last administration. But we want to very prudently use the dollars we have and look forward into making sure Indiana remains the crossroads of America. And now we really appreciate you taking time and stopping. Is there anything, el anything else that you'd like folks in Indiana to know, or at least this part of the state? Well, just that I always remain just honored to represent, and particularly getting to 
be from southern Indiana, getting to come visit, getting to uh, share what's great about southern Indiana with the rest of the state, mm -hmm. but uh, really appreciating the great state we have overall. Thank you very much. Our guest has been Sue Elsperman. She is the Lieutenant Governor for Indiana. We thank you for watching WJTS Inform. We are local people watching local people.